Welcome back, sippers of tea, to the Gamer Muscle YouTube channel. And after seven hours of streaming and driving every single vehicle in the new WTCR DLC for Race Room, here is our review of which car is best, what we think of them, and why I'm never going to drive a front wheel drive car again without vomiting a few times, sticking my head in a microwave, and then jumping off the cliffs of Dover whilst the tide's out after dazzling myself in petrol, lighting it, and also shooting myself with a shotgun. As you might have gathered, I'm not the biggest fan of front wheel drive cars apart from the Clio Cup. That's, that's quite a good front wheel drive car. Front wheel drive cars are for doing shopping. They're not for racing. But I know some people do like racing front wheel drive cars. And I will concede you do actually get good close racing online with front wheel drive cars due to the fabled property of... I've made a mistake, now I've slapped my foot on the accelerator and the mistake has vanished through the power of front wheel drive. And these cars are no exception. They do seem to produce good close online racing with some tit for tat overtaking, a little bit of paint exchange and a little bit of WWF wrestling. But you know, that is the point of these cars, close competitive online racing with big fields and lots of tiers. Fortunately, a nice characteristic and probably the best aspect of all the vehicles in the pack is the mid-corner lift-off oversteer, which allows you, despite them being boring front-wheel drive cars, to manipulate the rear of the vehicle and get it to turn into those corners and take some nice tight lines whilst waiting for old age to take a hold of you before you get on the throttle to power out of the corner. It's actually really quite satisfying trying to nail that and trying to just get the absolute most out of it without scrubbing off all your speed also i think what's really nice with these vehicles is the force feedback informs you very clearly how much grip you have on the fronts especially when it comes to getting on the power with it also giving a nice little bit of torque steer through the force feedback when you do gun the power a bit too much this of course is crucial for front wheel drive cars because basically the battle is how can i get the power on the front without losing the grip and without losing the potential to put that power onto the road surface and propel the car forwards. With these vehicles, you also have a good amount of control over the weight of the car to then swing the back out and get it around some of those slower corners, allowing you to then get on the power sooner in a more optimal line, which again is really satisfying. Being a bit of a Debbie Downer though, the brakes on these cars in this pack are seemingly pretty useless in that it's very hard to lock the wheels up and the cars just feel very sluggish to slow down. Also, if you set the brake bias as far back as possible with a ridiculously stiff rear, you still can't get the back end of the car out just on the brakes alone. It's going to be through shuffling the back with the mass of the car or really throwing it into a corner. Even if you try to turn in and more aggressively tray your brake, what tends to happen is you then just induce understeer. So with these cars, it really is a case of braking a straight line, get the car in the corner and then manipulate the rear end a bit using a bit of throttle balance and maybe a tiny bit of trail braking, but, but not too much. Now, I know that sounds like how you might have to drive every car, but you know, with this, it's just a lot less than what you do with, say, a Clio Cup, where when you're with the Clio Cup car, you, uh, you've you got to be really gentle on the brake because it's immediately trying to trip over itself. These cars are not trying to trip over themselves. They're very stable and uh, just, just particularly happy for the rear to not come out. Personally, I would prefer the rear to be much more active on braking. I like to be balancing and fighting with the rear of the car a little bit on braking, especially with front-wheel drive cars. But, you know, I can see how many drivers might actually welcome the stability that you get with these cars and a more sort of methodical approach to driving them. Of the pack, the uh, Audi seemed to be the most refined, neutral, seemed to feel the, the heaviest, probably because it was the most brick-like. In my opinion, it was the car that I liked the least because I like the cars to be active. But if you want something that just feels very solid, and I think in many ways very believable, you would probably prefer the Audi out of the pack but if you want something that's a bit more active and exciting and you want the most nimble car in the pack then it seemed that the Seat Cupra its inherent quality seemed to be the most exciting and lively and that's the that's my favorite from the pack I would say though with any of the cars if you adjust the uh, the camber and the toe settings 
you can get them to at least be a lot looser on the rear but regardless of the car and regardless of the settings you just can't get the back end out in a in a very active way on braking it, it, they are just very stable which which i think is a shame but maybe that's what the real cars are like in terms of the believability and realism of these cars let's keep in mind that i've not driven a race car and i certainly haven't driven any of these race cars in real life but they actually feel very solid as cars i can't really fault the implementation of them you know sometimes when you get into a simulated race car it literally just feels off it doesn't feel right it doesn't seem realistic it's just it's just off with some cars these cars regardless of if you like them or don't like them or what, what your tastes are with vehicles it seemed to me that they felt as i would believe a real car would generally handle i don't know if it lines up exactly with the specific this car in real life and if you could use this as a training tool with this car in real life but it doesn't really matter to me these felt solid they didn't feel like they had any bugged out physics issues with them maybe there are some there but in the seven hours of driving i didn't really notice any apart from maybe the braking i think maybe these cars would lock up a bit more or be a little bit more responsive on braking but you know that's probably just race room i think the, the brakes in race room are just a little bit sluggish in general that's that's the way i feel maybe you guys in the comments can expand expand on that maybe some of you agree or disagree who knows but ultimately they felt very consistent which makes them actually quite satisfying and despite my dislike for front wheel drive cars i felt like i was getting better with these the more time i put into it and there was a good degree of reward from actually getting better with these vehicles so i think a lot of people would really enjoy driving these really enjoy getting used to them and really enjoy working out how to get the most out of them now in terms of the actual sounds of these cars you know they sound perfectly fine i don't think the sounds are like mind-blowing they're not they're not as exciting as like the 90s dtm cars in race or some of the other vehicles in race room the uh, gt3 cars for example i don't think these cars in real life again have the most mind-blowing ear-shattering sounds either so it's probably more on the realistic side but yeah they sound they sound as they do the tires oddly though the tire squeal sound sounds like lorry tires i don't know what that's about maybe the real car tires sound like lorry tires as well i wouldn't know but yeah the sounds are absolutely you know they're fine they work fine it functions fine you're not going to be complaining about the sounds it's just compared to other sounds in race room they're not as exciting and then of course you've got the actual car graphics in the interior these these all are obviously the authentic wtcr cars so if you like these vehicles in their appearance you can enjoy the nice 3d models they do look they look fantastic for what they are these aren't my favorite types of vehicles in terms of design i really don't like the, the look of these vehicles myself but i can't fault the actual um artistry and the 3d modeling all the details are there they look really high poly they reflect the light nicely the liveries are all spot on you know technically absolutely fantastic the interiors look really nice different dashes you've got the uh, the, the appropriate uh, digital displays sort of motec displays and the correct ones for the for the different cars all that spot on but these these cars visually again just from my personal subjective taste of what makes a race car sexy these, these are not sexy cars these these are uh, 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 these are wheelbarrows in my mind <laughs> there goes there goes any potential sponsorship opportunity with wtcr but i mean that, that's just that's just how i feel about these cars they're not radicals they're not prototypes they're not f formula vehicles they're, they're, you know you know they're not 90s dtm they are what they are if you like them then I'm, you know what i'm saying is if you like these cars because you've got a screw loose maybe you're dropped on the head ah uh, maybe maybe you've done too much flying and the and the radiation has uh, corrupted your brain if you like these cars and you like you follow wtcr and you want to sort of experience what it's like to be in a wtcr race then you will really like this because they look like wtcr cars they are wtcr cars and they're very accurately modeled so that's how we say that without offending the artistry but also point out that these vehicles visually have the charisma of a tortoise that's been run over by a combine harvester well 
I don't know if there's that much more to say. I mean, the uh, the pack also comes with the now launch control option for these specific cars where you, you bind a launch control button, make sure you do that, and then when you push that button, you uh, can hold the throttle down, you let go of the bot button, the bottom. you let go of the button, and the car then launches, and it also changes up through the gears, which in my mind is ridiculous. Why not have the drivers use skill at the start of a race? Why confine that to a button? I, I don't know. It's, it seems stupid to me. But it's there in the real series, and it's there in the simulator, and it's, it's quite a nice little gimmick to use. Uh, maybe when you've got a full grid of cars, and you've also got the reverse, if you're doing the reverse top 10 grid like they do in the real life, the skill is more in avoiding driving into people than it is modulating your throttle. So I can kind of understand it if, if I think of it in that way. All in all, I have to say, I think they are really nice front-wheel drive cars. Other than the braking aspect, totally spot on. Force feedback, sound, handling close online racing fantastic i would say personally i would just get the seat cupra if you want something loosey-goosey and if you want something tightened placid then go for the go for the audi of course if you want to do the full pack you can but nicely with race room you can try the individual cars out for yourself for free using the test mode and then decide what you want to get um also worth saying of course if you are gonna get this uh, dlc pack it's going to be much cheaper to buy VRP through the Race Room shop, which I'll put a link to in the uh, description and in the video, be that if you're buying one car or, or, or entire pack. And of course, at the moment, we have a Game of Muscle code that you can put in on the, uh, on the page there and you get 5% discount. And that's also an affiliate link. So I get some money when you buy stuff using that as well, which I really appreciate those of you that do that. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, I think we might do some more racing with this. But, as I say, front-wheel drive's not my, really my thing. I'd much rather just drive GT3 cars. Oh, dear, I've got the GT3 disease or, or 90s DTM. But uh, it's a nice addition to the simulator. It's a nice upgrade from the uh, previous year's WTCC. And uh, it, just, it just rounds off race room a bit more with even more content. So, uh Check it out for, try it out for free as I say, see what you think and uh, let me know in the comments guys what you think of these vehicles, if you think I'm uh, right to have a hatred of front wheel drive cars or wrong and should be executed at dawn. Maybe there's a specific thing that you like about these cars that I haven't talked about, uh, let us know about that as well so people that are thinking about getting this or don't know, know what to look out for. But uh, I think that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the like button. Uh, you know, that, that's how it is around here. That's how YouTube works. I will see you guys very soon, probably in the next live stream or in the next video. Until then, top up your teacups. Goodbye.